What's going on in here? Today we're drawing a retro TV in Illustrator. And here, in the lower part of the screen, so I'm just going to go big on the screen. Me small, screen big. Okay, so that you can see uh, what we are doing. So this is one that I drew earlier. I've turned it into an image. Okay, because it's kind of cheating. If, uh, if you know, it's kind of drawn out already and it's there. Although it's not cheating because I drew it in the first place. So for the next 90 minutes, that's what's going to be going on. We are going to be drawing uh, this TV with the usual tips, tricks and techniques uh, thrown in for you. Right then. Ah, super good. So let's start the job of the day. I'm actually going to copy this image and we we'll, might as well work in the file I've got here. So here's how I work uh, typically when I'm tracing an object. I'm going to just hit the plus key or the plus icon down at the bottom here to create a new layer. I just can't bear drawing with red guide, so I drag that down to the bottom. I then paste down the image like so. Double click the layer, okay, and check template, okay, in those options. And it was dim images, because remember this is an image down to 50%. And I'll give it a name such as uh, ref, for reference, there we go, that will do. Hit OK, you can see that's now been dimmed, and I have my layer here to begin working on, like so. Good, really good. OK, so I think we're going to work from more or less the back uh, to the front of this TV and we'll just hide some layers actually. So I might actually change this from draw um, to TV uh, set just there. That's going to be the whole uh, thing. I'm then going to get a rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to get my rectangle tool and draw the rectangle which will form the main body of the set. And we can start to uh, color that up. So I think this is going to be a very, very dark gray indeed that's super good okay and that's working uh, pretty well just there then we're going to change the stroke so i'm going to go ahead here and i'll add first of all so that you can see it more easily i'm going to go ahead and add a nice thick stroke like that in sort of a magenta color okay by the way if you're new here and you're wondering why my toolbox looks so different. I have lots of extra tools. I normally have a toolbox, a special toolbox that I hide those extra tools with, but unfortunately that uh, that got damaged last week. And so I haven't had chance to repair it uh, just yet. So next time there'll be that. So you don't need to worry about all these extra tools. Uh, we won't be using them in this session. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring my stroke to the front so i'm going to tap x on my keyboard to bring that to the front and then hit the period key on my keyboard full stop if you want to be british about it okay and i have now a gradient i want to change the gradient type now fortunately the gradient panel is open okay so we can see that just there and it's going from white to black which is great however it's working within the stroke. So that's pretty much the same as using the stroke as an opacity mask, more or less. So I'm going to change it. We now have another option here uh, along the stroke, which will go from the zero point. So one of the points has to be zero, and that, that happens to be this one here. It will go along drawing the gradient along there, but that's not what I want. What I want is the next one is to draw it across the stroke. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can see that stroke like so, because this is how a linear gradient works, the way you'd expect it to. It's as if the gradient is drawn across the stroke there, like so. But I actually want it to reflect. I want it to have a highlight in the middle. And the way that to do that is not actually to add another stop, although I could do that. The way to do it is to actually turn it into a radial gradient. And because it's being drawn across the stroke, it creates me this reflecting gradient like so. There we go. So now we've got that nice, easy gradient just there. That black is way too harsh. So I'm going to make that kind of a different gray just there as well. So I think that's working out pretty.
pretty well. Good, good stuff. Uh, time for another rectangle then. Down at the bottom here, I'm going to create another uh, rectangle like so that's slightly smaller than the first one. I don't need a stroke on that, so I can just hit the slash key okay, on my keyboard to get rid of that stroke, given that the stroke is in front in the toolbox. I'm going to hit X to bring the fill to the front. The colour, I think, there works pretty well just for the moment, so I'm not going to change too much of it at the moment. Uh, although later, uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to change that into a gradient. So let's go ahead and get that to where we want it to be, which is around about there. Now, it does need to be a little bit larger. So I'll go out to those edges, like so. Okay, then I'm going to get my direct selection tool, so tapping A on the keyboard for my direct selection tool, and I'm going to select the bottom two points, just there, like so. Okay, so just the one on the bottom left and bottom right. And I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to get the scale tool. Now you'll notice that a transformation point has appeared in the mathematical center of those two objects. And so all I'm going to do is drag to the left here just to change, okay, that angle. And you can see how that works like that. Something in that sort of ballpark is pretty good. I'm going to hit A again on my keyboard, taking me back to the direct selection tool, and you'll notice that the corner widgets have appeared. Now, nothing has these dead, dead straight corners. Even the sharpest knife you can think of, okay, still has a tiny, tiny little bit of an edge on it. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and just round that off just a little bit because it looks more natural that way. We don't need to worry about the top too much because we're not going to see that in that form. I'm going to send it to the back, so shift command, okay, and right bracket. So if we just go ahead and select it with the selection tool, actually that would work uh, even better. Sorry, left bracket. So shift command or shift control left bracket, and that's the square bracket, by the way, not the parenthesis, okay, that you often see. Okay, uh, so now I've got those two things, I do want to add a bit of a gradient, because there would be some shadow underneath here. So let's go ahead and hit the period key on the keyboard to get a gradient there. This one will pretty much be a linear gradient, okay, and by about 90 degrees, like so. Okay, and then we can change these colors out. So I'll double click on this stop just here, and we'll make that very, very dark gray. Okay, and the kind of lighter gray there, that's, that's working pretty well. I don't know how well you can see on the stream, okay, this contrast, but it only needs to be soft. I'm looking at it myself, okay, on uh, what you're seeing, and I'm seeing that looks, that looks kind of okay, I think, really good. Okay, right, so. Uh, back to this, I think that's pretty good for the background of the set. That works pretty well, I think. So I'm going to go to my layers. I'm actually going to lock that layer. Okay, and then I'm going to turn that into outline. So here's a neat trick. If I add a new layer to start off with, okay. Now, when you go into outline mode, Command Y or Control Y, it turns any Illustrator layer into outlines. Okay, let me just... Uh, do Command Y or Control Y, and you'll notice that when something is in outline mode, that the eye icon, okay, in the layers panel changes. Let's do that again. All right, you'll notice there's no eyeball, just the outline of an eye. See, it's the clue. <laughs> okay, so uh, Command Y, Control Y again to do that. So how do I get one single layer to appear as outlines? Well, all you need to do is hold down the Command key on a Mac, Control on Windows and click the visibility icon, and it changes only that layer to outlines. Dun, dun, dun. Super good trick. Right, so uh, this layer, I think I'm going to name this uh, main panels, like so, and then we'll draw uh, some main panels for this TV. So. I'm going to get the rectangle tool just here and draw my first rectangle across like this. And I think I need some more TV-like uh, colors. So I could try actually seeing if there's anything 
in any of the libraries just here. So I've gone to the loader in this library. Um, do you know what? Actually, what I could do is I could go to color books. And maybe if I chose something like true match or focal tone, I'd get loads and loads of colors. They're easy to find. Let's go for true match just here. I've got a true match swatch book, which is fantastic. Now I can have a bit of a scroll through here. Now these are the kind of colors I think I'm after. So let's just go ahead and click that. Okay, that color gets added to my swatches panel at the same time. And let's try another one just here as well. That's kind of a good color. Another one, that's a nice color too. I want something a bit darker. I think great stuff. Okay, those those will do for the moment. I think they are pretty good. I'll do a couple that are just slightly more blue in there as well. Okay, let's turn off the true match uh, stuff there. Now, they are all global swatches. So if I change anything about those colors by like double clicking in them and then changing the color everywhere the global swatch is in use, that will uh, change as well. But the way I'm actually building this one out, I don't want global swatches. So I'm going to shift click the first and last of those swatches like so. I'm then going to go to the fly out here and choose swatch options. And I'm just going to turn off global like so. And now they just become regular mix swatches. So that's that's good. Okay, this one here, I'm thinking that this one's probably not too bad for what I want. So I'm going to actually create a new color group with that swatch inside of it. And then I'm going to go to my color guide panel. I'm going to change the options here so you can see colors around that base color. So lighter tints and shades of that, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so I'm going to change the number of variations I see there. So I'm going to go here to my color guide options and change that to 10, not 120. Uh, that was an accidental type, change that to 10. And now you see I see lots more options in there. So I'm going to grab a few of these. I'm going to deselect the artwork. So V to get to my selection tool, click away to get, uh, to get nothing selected there. And then I think I'm going to grab pretty much that range of colors. So I clicked on the first one here, shift clicked on the last one that I want. If I didn't want some of them in, like this one in the middle, because that's the root color, just hold down command or control just to deselect that from that range. Then I can go ahead and click here to save the color group to the swatches panel. Now thinking about it, I could have actually just left that group there out and just dragged this color in at the beginning, the root color there. So let's do that. We'll get rid of that one. Okay, good. All right, so there we are. We've got our colors to work with, which is nice. Okay, uh, that's pretty good. It's not dark enough, so I'm going to choose a much, much darker color uh, just here. Something in that sort of range there perhaps is working pretty well. Yeah, we'll go, go, I will go with that one. Okay, that's nice, but I also want these angles. Let me just move this out of the way a second. So I'm going to need to represent these angles in here. Actually, I wonder if it would be more useful well, not more useful, if it would be useful for us to have a color reference of this. I'm going to go ahead and select that and copy it. Okay, and then come back onto my main panels here. In fact, if I add a new layer, call that reference. There, it's a different sort of ref. And then paste that in. And we can just reduce that. Also, if I need to, I can go ahead and pinch colors from there too, which is good if you're working from an image. Okay. And I'll put that down towards the um, top right there because I don't think I have an overlay that goes to that. Let's just check. Ah, there you go. It's right away. It's me on the TV. Hi. So, so good. Okay, we'll move that down uh, towards the bottom here. So we've got it and we'll lock at that layer. I like so because that way we can turn it on and off as we need it. Right. So we need to get these angles here. And actually, I, I can see that I've chosen a much better uh, gray there. I think I might have to mix. I might have to mix a little bit there with the color controls. Let's go for HSB. 
So hue, saturation and brightness. Make sure I can see all of the options. So show options in the panel. Let's drop down the saturation of that a bit. Yeah, because the colors I've got otherwise are great for the screen. That's much, much, much improved. Let's drop the brightness down just a bit. So there are a number of different ways I could actually represent uh, these angles. A few different ways that I could do that. Uh, and But the way I'm going to do it is actually with gradient strokes. But before I get to that particular point, I need to do a little bit of carving up of the shape. So let me just go ahead and add that as a new swatch just so I've got it uh, as well just there. I'm just going to hit the backslash key on my keyboard. I'm going to go to this top left hand corner here and drag down to the bottom right using the smart guides there that are telling me when I'm on those points. This time I'll go from the bottom left over to the top right just there like so. Okay, groovy, 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 groovy. Now what I could do here is I'll just cut that stroke there. So I'm just going to cut that to the clipboard. So Command X to cut that. This one here, I am going to get the path, object, path, divide objects below. Now, I could have also done this, by the way, with live paint. Uh, Command F to bring that stroke in. Okay, so again, same as before, object, path, divide objects below, like so. And there we go. Now I've got those individual parts just there. So I think what I'm going to do is get this one, go to my color guide or my color panel right, now this is allowing me tints of this tints of this particular color i think i'm actually going to make that well i might have to actually adjust that one uh, slightly if i go to hsb here i'm just going to make that one just a bit darker just a bit like that tiny bit tiny bit i said <laughs> there we go let's have a look at that Ooh, not dark enough i think i'll use my arrow keys Slightly more control there, so I'm just clicking the down arrow until I get where I want to. That's pretty good. I think I'll do the exact opposite here. Actually, here I could use uh, the tint because this one's going to be lighter, but it only needs to be just a little bit lighter. And that's at 97% uh, right now. That, I think, is working quite well. Now it's a matter of creating those gradients. Right, so what am I going to do here? Well, this is where I'm going to introduce just a bit of shading to these corners, just to add a little bit more depth. If we go ahead and look at the reference here in the bottom corner, let me just do big zooming on that. Okay, that was just a touch too big on the big zooming. You can see what's going on there, right? So we've got some shadowing going on in the top, which is just that these things weren't dead angular. They did have a slight curve. Uh, to them and then we've got a highlight kind of catch light going on uh, down in the bottom here so that's what we're modeling at the moment and we're going to do it with gradient strokes so I'm going to get my uh, stroke tool or my line tool I'm going to draw a line down like so now again so it's easier my smart guides here by the way helping me out no end <clears throat> so it's easier for you to see I'm going to give that a color which is not being used in the illustration, so it's going to be uh, magenta. I'm going to go ahead and make that big-ish, like that. Something like that is working really, really well. Now, I could go ahead and uh, do this all inside of a clipping mask. That would all work for a, for a clipping mask, um, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to actually use a width profile here. I'm going to use width profile 4, which is in the default set. At the moment, it's going the wrong way around. So I'm going to go to the stroke here and just switch the direction over uh, like so. Okay, so I've got those two things just there. Okay, so let's zoom in on, uh, on this line so you can see it more clearly. Yeah. Uh, I've got, I seem to have GPU uh, acceleration turned off for some reason. Let's just go ahead and just have a quick look at what's going on just there. Okay, I should be getting animated zoom. But I'm not. Okay, I'm not worried too much though. It's not a big deal. Uh, so stroke uh, needs to be in front just here for me to be able to use the keyboard. So I'm just going to hit X to bring the stroke to the front. Period key again. So hopefully that's syncing in now. 
okay, that you can, uh, that's the quickest way for you to apply a gradient to the fill or the stroke period key works every time. Uh, this is something that I want to work on both sides. Okay, so radial gradient is what's going to work best for me there. Now, again, I'm going to make this very, very easy for you to see. Okay, so if I just choose that color, at the moment it's going within the stroke. So I'm going to change it to across the stroke. And there we go. Okay, we've got this nice radial gradient, like so, which is working to either side. So I'm going to go ahead now and start to work the colors the way that I want them to be. So on the right hand side here, I'm going to use a very dark gray. So 51, 51, 51 in RGB. And I'm going to use the same, okay, on the other end. Okay, so the same gray from gray to gray. However, on the outside here, I am going to change the opacity to zero. And you can see how that's working. Now that's it does look a little bit banded there, but that's because I'm not getting a GPU preview. If I printed it, it wouldn't look uh, that way, I promise you. I'm going to change the midpoint blend here just to tighten that up somewhat. And I think I might leave it at that. I think that's pretty good. That's working quite well. In fact, it's working very well. So let's uh, go ahead and look at that. So we've got that just there. That's still selected. I am going to tap. O on my keyboard to get to the reflect tool. Come down to the middle here. Okay, and you can see that's all lighting up. Smart guides lighting up. Option key down or Alt key. Click, which places the transformation point and also launches, okay, the reflect dialog. I want it to reflect vertically and I want to create a copy. Ninjas don't click copy, right? You can. But if you're able to use the keyboard, use the keyboard because it's right in front of your hands. To make a copy, all you need to do is hold down the option key and hit return or alt key and hit return. There you go. You've got a copy like so. Groovy, groovy, groovy. I'm then going to select both of those strokes. OK, like so. I am then going to tap O on my keyboard again. Come down to that middle point just there. Hold down Alt or Option and click. This time I want to uh, create a copy uh, reflected horizontally or across the horizontal axis. Option or Alt, Return, and there we are. Then with both of those selected, all I need to do is to change the colors here. So I'm going to change these to very, very, very light grays, like so. Okay, I might go just a bit darker than that. There we go. That's working pretty well. So I'm using uh, 153 across the board. So let's go 153 across the board, which should be about there. And that's working kind of nice. Looking at these two on the top, on reflection, right, I think they are a tad dark. So what I'm going to do is just bring down their opacity globally, like so. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I think that's much better. Although it does appear, oh mind you, it might be the uh, non-GPU preview. It is. And it would be a good idea now to do a quick save, just in case uh, Annika Argval should turn up the save angel. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this on my computer. Save it into here. Retro TV run live, which tells me that it's the one that I did while I was actually live uh, with you. That's working kind of nice. I think uh, before we go uh, any further into the screen here, what would probably be a good idea would be to add that stroke <clears throat> around the whole top. And I think there's a couple of different ways I could do it, but I think the way that I am going to do it, okay, is to group the, uh, or copy the shapes that I've got there. So I'm just gonna copy those four shapes Okay, and then Command F to paste those in front. So that's in front of where they were and join them together like so. So let's just have a quick look if I just cut that from there. Okay, and then paste it. You can see that I have got that new shape. I don't want the fill for this. I actually want the stroke because the stroke here also should have a little bit of a bevel to it, a bit of a dimension. So Shift X will swap that out so it swaps over the fill and stroke attributes 
And then it's going to be Gradient City again. Okay, so it's just going to be another gradient on top there. Okay, so pretty good. Uh, now, I've just changed that to across the stroke. That's working quite well. However, I don't want to make that radial to reflect because I do want a highlight edge on there, but I want it to be thinner. So this is one of those instances where I do actually want to take a darker color onto that top edge. So I'm just going to choose something that's a bit darker and a bit darker still. There you go. So now I've got that soft edge there you can tell that this edge would be deeper than the other that might be just a touch too dark there there we go I think that's working quite well so now we're building out that dimension okay that doesn't need to be as thick as the other things that are on there just somewhere in that sort of ballpark I think where I was was pretty good that's working nicely from there so make sure that is right at the front yeah, what about that stroke there? That seems to be... Yeah, you see, that's hovering around in the wrong place. So let's correct all of that just now. So these things here... What I could do... Just send those to the back and then bring them up a level at a time. And just see if we've corrected that corner. I'm just going to zoom in on that corner. Yeah, that's, well, it's, it's a little bit better, but I think what I might have to do would be to actually make those strokes slightly less uh, prevalent than they are. Okay, that's good, though, otherwise. We're, that's something I can work with. That is not a difficult thing for me to correct at all. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to uh, get this stroke here, the uh, shape that has a stroke attached to it, I'm just going to have a quick look there and just see. See, it sort of bothers me that that isn't coming to the front over the top of that stuff. And it should do. Let me have a look inside the layers panel just to confirm that actually is at the top of the stack. It is at the top of the stack. Now, how is it blending? It's blending normally. Okay. All right, I can fix that. I'll make those strokes shorter just a little while. So now it's time for the main screen itself. This is going to be a two-stage process uh, here. So I'm going to actually use the path I've got there as the basis of that. So I'm going to go Object, Path, Offset Path, which we used earlier, this time minus values. And I'm going to just eyeball this into place. So something like that. I'm going for minus 27. Looks about right to me. Maybe just, maybe just a bit bigger than that. 22. Pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. That's grand. I'm going to do Shift X here just to swap the gradient out just for the moment. Okay. And then I'm going to tap A on my keyboard, which gets me, of course, the direct selection tool. And it's the corner widgets. I'm after here just to round these off like so. Okay, so something like that. That's pretty good. What I do live, one of the things I do love, and I'm going to show you this just briefly uh, because it does come from one of my plugins, okay, is dynamic corners from Astute Graphics because I'll just go ahead and switch my workspace to my regular. Workspace, you're going to see a whole load of panels appear. Don't be alarmed by that if you're fairly new to Illustrator. So, if I go for my dynamic corners here and I'm going to select the dynamic corners tool, they have three different options true radius, standard, and squircular. Squircular gives me a very, very different corner radius, and actually, is you can see the difference between that the fact that it's just slightly flatter okay, off the corner. Of course, I could then go ahead and apply that to like, all of my other corners as well. But this is meant to be uh, Illustrator native drawing today. So I'm going to go back to uh, where I was before. And let me switch my workspace back to here. So if I go back to Essentials Classic, like so. Okay, so that's working pretty well. I am going to copy that to the clipboard. 
Okay, that particular shape, in fact, if I switch it back to have uh, just the gradient fill there, do you know what? I'm going to make it even easier to see. I'm going to make the stroke there uh, magenta, and I'm not even going to copy it thinking about it. I'm going to make that stroke real big so you can see it. Okay, then I'm going to, with my selection tool active, hit return, like so, horizontally. I want to move this by 400 pixels. Vertically, I want to uh, move it by none at all. Okay, uh, and in fact, I want to go by minus 400, so it goes off to the left. There we go. In fact, we'll go to minus. Let's go to minus 800. There we go. Okay, so that's what I would want there. And what I should have done <laughs> was hit copy on the uh, dialog in my enthusiasm. So we'll try that again this time. With feeling, I hit that. Right, so 800, zero, like so, option key down, or oh, minus 800, yeah, uh, option key down, hit return, so you get that all important copy over there, there you go, right, uh, we do get people, by the way, on here who love to watch me troubleshoot, so happy days, <laughs> you'll be able to do that uh, plenty in just a moment. Right, so I've got that here. I am going to turn this into a gradient mesh object. So object, and actually I ought to give it a base color because otherwise I'm going to end up coloring all sorts on here. So, and do you know what? I am actually going to layer this out. I'm going to move this up onto another layer. So I'm adding a new layer here, which I'm just going to call screen. And then I'm going to use the proxy region just there on the right hand side to move that up onto that layer and we'll lock the main panels there. We'll be coming back to those in just a while. So with screen selected, okay, I am going to turn this into a gradient mesh. Now there's a few different ways I could do that, uh, but one of the quickest ways is to go create gradient mesh from the object uh, menu. You can determine how many rows and columns you want in here. So four, you can see there on either way, which is actually not too bad. I could probably get away, you know, with three rows to start off with. Um, I think that would be pretty good. I'm going to go with three rows, but I am going to stick with four columns because of the corners in here. Okay, and appearance flat is good. If I went to center, you'd get a bit of a gradient in there, like so. But I'm just going to go with flat for now. And hit OK. While that's all still selected, going to change the color here so I'm going to choose this uh, kind of light color so let's switch so the fill is in front we can go lighter still there we go something like that that's nice then I'm going to tap U on my keyboard which gets me the gradient mesh tool or the mesh tool here it is in the toolbox and I want to move some of these lines around so I want to drag this line along the vertical line so I'm going to hold down shift which locks the vertical line for me, okay, and allows me to drag the other lines up into place. Now I'm just watching the lines here, okay, to where they join. I'm gonna bring this one up also. Bring that up just away like that, and bring that one up away to a similar kind of height. Release the shift key now. I'm going to grab that handle bring this down so I'm kind of imagining the dimensional shape of that okay so as it would be looking at it I'm looking at the top of a curve of course and go to the other side let's bring that one around like that that's good I think I want to do something along the bottom as well so I'm going to just bring that down holding down shift again yeah bring this down a little way do you know what? I'm going to go further still with this. Okay, nice. That's working pretty well. Shift key still down on there while I'm moving them. Just keeps the other things in place. Bringing that handle around. Handles on meshes do not work the same way that they do on objects. Uh, I'm also going to bring these ones now over to the edge. So holding down shift again, which locks the Horizontals, just there, okay, so that's pretty good. 
Let's just bring these in. I'm protecting the corners still. Okay, just to get those across like that. That's working well. Okay, so now I've got those in place. This middle one here is useful, right? I do uh, think that will be useful, but I do want some additional lines here uh, just to the side, okay, of the ones that are on the left and right here. So what I'm going to do is move my cursor into position. I'm going to hold down shift and then click, and you can see how it's added me a line. Okay, following the form between the line I have here and the edge of the shape. Okay, that's really useful. Yeah, that's working pretty good just there. They, and I'm going to do the same just a bit further over, just in case I need them. Okay, so just in that sort of region there and that region there. Because these almost act like stops for a gradient in a way. That's one way you can think of them. Right, Q is the thing we're after now. Q that looks like Q Q looks like a lasso. I'm going to lasso these points along the top here. Okay, and then I'm going to add a very light color. Just there. In fact, let's make it white. You can see that. Look at that. Okay, in fact, I might go for one of the ones from the as a pattern. Yeah, that one's pretty good, but not quite light enough. I think I might have to go for color panel here and just increase the brightness of that. I do still want some of the color in it, but I want the brightness more than anything else. That's pretty good. And now I'm going to go ahead and select the ones at the bottom here. Okay, so just those ones in the middle. And that's kind of good. And we'll make those darker. There we are. So we've got that slight bit of variation in there. That's that's it. Nice and soft. Something like that is working pretty well. Okay. And those stops there working nicely. Now, if I needed another highlight, that's when I'd move these lines into the side. And in fact, if I wanted something else in the middle, I could use either the direct selection tool. The reason I don't use that by default is because there's the potential for me to move it. Yeah. Because it will allow me to move a point. Okay, so that's why I prefer to do QQ, looks like a lasso, uh, to do that and then change my color from there. And you can see how that works like so. I think I'm going to go back to that light one. I think I will increase the brightness just on that one in the middle. Now that's an interesting looking, interesting looking shape. It's got some dimension to it. It does look a bit like a tube which is good. Uh, I'm not what, too worried about the edge there just at the moment. That's working just well for me. What I do need to do is go back to my layers. I need to unlock the layer underneath, zoom out a little bit, because I need to pick up this one here. Okay, then hit return. I want to move it by 800 pixels and zero pixels. I don't need a copy, just hit return and it's back where it should be. And then we'll bring that up onto the screen layer here. Now, if you were doing this for something like After Effects, you could always do most of the things in the gradient mesh transparent apart from the highlights. And that way you get a really soft highlight on its own layer that you could drop and have footage running underneath it, which is one of the things you can do. Okay, it's a nice, interesting thing uh, to do. With this, however, I want to make some changes, so I'm going to add a gradient uh, to the strokes. Whoops, a daisy. Um, let's bring the stroke to the front and add the gradient in here. Now, this one's going to be nice and soft. You don't need that really dark bit in there. It is going to go across uh, the stroke. Okay, so just between those two things there. Okay, that's kind of good. Uh, it needs to swap around, so it's the other way around, so we've got that edge. Also try here to increase that stroke weight a little bit. Now, so the stroke I've chosen there is 12 points. Zooming in for you right now. Okay, so there's the stroke I've chosen, 12 points. I don't want it to have 
the opacity it currently has. I'm going to change that to multiply. And then I'm going to back off the overall opacity of that. So just bringing that down until I'm kind of happy it's going to do what I want it to do. Something like that works pretty well, 42%. So it is a 12 point stroke. Half of 12 class is, yes, six. Okay, so I am going to go to object uh, path. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not going to go object path. I'm going to go effect path offset path because I don't want a copy of it. So what I want to do here is I want to make sure it is a negative because I want it to go inside. And then I want it to be that half of the value of the stroke. Okay, so six uh, PT, six points. Now that should equate to six pixels, but not guaranteed. Okay, so I just prefer to type the unit in. If I just tab through, okay, now that's on the edge of the screen, like so. That's working quite well. Let's go and have a look at that. Too hard. So just going to get this color here. I do want the transition. I'm just going to bring that down to sort of 10%. And now you can see that really does have a lot more dimension to it. Right, there's a little bit of a highlight coming along uh, from there. Now, I've, I switched that to uh, multiply. If I change that to something like overlay, yeah, well, those two things are very, very close to gray, so it's not going to work too well. But I could do that or darken. Darken's going to work quite well. Just there, not quite as harsh as that. So now that screen does have some additional dimension. The great thing is, of course, is if I need to change anything, Okay, about that, all I need to do is select that particular object. So I'm using the uh, proxy just here, and then just model the colors. You know, I could even use the recolor artwork dialog. And down here, we've got options for uh, adjusting the brightness. So if I bring that down and down and down, you can see it's changing those colors. And I just click away because kind of nice. Outside of that, however, I need to do something else. So I am going to grab hold of that stroke uh, and I need to change something about uh, the outside here, how it relates to the outside, because there would be a slight shadow from that. The way I'm going to do it, okay, is by selecting both of those items. So I'm using the layers panel here to select those items, okay. So those two things, and then I'm going to group them like so. So they're a group. I can then go ahead and apply an effect to the group. So at the group level, in fact, let's get the appearance panel open so you can see that. So I have the group. I'm going to apply an effect to it. So the effect I'm going to apply is a raster effect. Okay, so this is going to create, uh, create an image, essentially, a runtime bitmap. I'm going to choose outer glow. I'm going to change the blend here to multiply. So we can see already that we've got this big dimension going on here. I'm going to increase the blur amount. I think I'll go quite a bit on there, you know. I think I'm going to go for maybe 16 pixels is pretty good. Let's try bringing the opacity down just a bit. So it's not too harsh. There we go. And so that's on that. And now we've got a connection, okay, between those two things. If I needed to, I could always go ahead and add uh, another fill to that. So that would change that slightly and then feather that off. If you want to see how that works, I'm going to add another fill. Command uh, slash control slash on Windows. So there's my other fill. I can drag that fill down beneath the content so it's being drawn underneath i go to my effects path offset path so you can see how that's being drawn around the edge there like so there we are cool so we'll do that to 14 pixels we could have also added another outer glow but just so you can see that i've got that on there i'm going to choose a dark gray Okay, then I'm going to change the opacity of that. Okay, we'll go to multiply for that one. And we'll bring the opacity down 
and down and down. And you can see now how that's, that's working in there. Nice. And if I wanted to as well, as I said, I could go effects, stylize, feather. And if I increase the amount there to sort of halfway where that is, and then we get this nice soft connection between those. There you go. That's how that works. Okay, so let's say that we're okay with those bits so far. I think at that particular point, we can go ahead and go to our layers here. We can collapse and lock the screen layer. Okay, the main panels will go back into that layer, I think. That would be good. So let's unlock that, open that up. And what might be a good idea here is to lock all of the content we have so far. On that layer so we're not leaving ourselves uh, completely done for I'm going to add a new sub layer in there so I've got something to draw on you can see that that's now been added and then let's start drawing here so we need this panel on the side okay so rectangle tool for that smart guides helping me out there with the sizing let's just draw this piece here okay smart guides being very, very helpful indeed. Thank you, smart guides. That's another one that needs to be kind of dark. There, uh, maybe that's that's about as far as I need to go, really. And I just thought I need that um, stroke from the outside there of that panel, but I've got that down in outline mode at the moment. So let's go and restore that back to its normal view. So command click or control click on the thumbnail to bring that back in. Uh, this being the same color as the main background is just fine. I'm just going to tap I here and sample that stroke. Bring the stroke down a bit. It doesn't need to be as big as the one on the outside, the main sort of bevel uh, there. That's looking kind of nice. Let's get our reference back on as well so we can see that. So this is the area we're working in now. So we've got several of these wood panels and then we've got the dials to, to do here and the antenna. How are we doing for time? We've got 20 minutes. Yeah, we should be able to do that. Just fine. Okay, so let's get cracking on creating the wood panels first of all. What I'm going to do is I am going to get a rectangle and I'm going to eyeball uh, a rectangle on. I'm not worried about the reference underneath so much now, just so, just drawing it the way I think it should be. Uh, so that's what I've got just there. I am going to uh, get rid of the stroke, so X slash X brings my uh, fill to the front here. I'm going to need some wood-like colors for this. I'm going to go to my swatches. I'm going to go to the loader. And then I've got like nature just here. So there's foliage and all of that stuff. There's a few different odds and ends in here. Earth tones might be kind of good. That might have some things in there uh, that I want. Oh, that's not too bad. Just there, I'm going to add that color group. I'm also going to add the color group beneath it and the one beneath that. It's, it's of no super, super consequence and indeed the one at the top. There we go. So I've got all of those color groups in now that I can draw on randomly. I'm going to change the background color of this to a very dark uh, brown. And I might even use one from the default swatches. It's got a bit too much red in it uh, just at the minute. So let's go ahead and kind of tune that out. We'll take, make that slightly more orange. By moving the hue slider just there, let's drop the saturation just a tad, and the brightness just a tad, just to bring that down somewhere I'd like that to be groovy. Okay, now I'm going to turn this into a symbol. Okay, so I'm going to go to my symbols panel. I am using a profile here which has loads of icons inside of it, so I'm going to select all unused and get rid of those, and then Click on new symbol, we'll just call this wood panel, like so, there we go, movie clip, dynamic symbol, all of those things are good. Nice. And then we're going to double click on that so we go into isolation mode on the symbol. So I'm going to get my selection tool now and pick up that rectangle and I'm going to use a brush on this to get my wood texture. 
Okay, so I've got that shape. I am going to switch to draw inside mode. Now here are the drawing modes at the bottom of the toolbox. There are three. Draw normal, which is the normal way you work. Draw behind, which will draw behind. And draw inside. You can cycle through those using the keyboard. Shift is what you need an object selected. Shift and tap D twice. And then it goes into draw inside mode. Now take a look. It's going to be difficult to see because these elements don't scale with when I zoom in. Okay, you should be able to see those dotted lines around the edges. In fact, let me just try a screen zoom and see if that works on here. Oh, it looks like it is. So you should see me uh, zoomed in on that corner. There we go. So it is actually working. So these, this dotted line tells me that I'm in draw inside mode. Right. So that's how I know with a certainty that I'm in the right mode. Okay, I don't need anything selected here. I do need the brush, so I'm going to tap B on my keyboard to get the brush. <coughs> Pardon me. And then I need a brush to work with. So, there's one here, this bristle brush, but I think I, I could do better. So I'm going to click on the loader. I'm going to go to bristle brush and to the bristle brush library. Okay, let's go ahead and go big with this one. So this fan... Is going to work perfectly well. Now, just a thing to note here, bristle brushes create lots of strokes, okay, lots of sort of appearance level strokes, right? So you still have just the one stroke, but it creates loads of additional strokes with different appearances and opacities to create the effect, all right? So that's what it does. If you use too many, Illustrator is going to say to you, this illustration contains lots of bristle brush, brist, bristle brush strokes, okay, which may degrade uh, performance on this document and just give you a whole load of things to do with it. But it's fine. I intend only, you can see here I've got a preview, so I'm actually on uh, my Cintiq today. Um, okay, you can see that as I tilt the brush, tilt is actually turned on here for this uh, brush. So I need to choose a different colour. And so I'm going to go to my swatches here. I'm going to choose this sort of lighter brown colour. Um, I can tell you that flying over the studio right now is a Spitfire and a P51 Mustang and some a couple of other things. A French uh, World War II fighter and some stunt planes flying over here right now. I'm just going to undo that because that wasn't... Uh, not applying to the right thing, so I need to just tap here to make sure I'm drawing with the colour. There we go, you can see that. So just by pulling that across, I've got this nice effect. I'll do that one more time. I'm going to start from the outside and go across like so. I'm then going to choose another colour. It's important that the stroke okay, is uh, in the foreground just here, and I'll just choose a darker Round just there. Let's see how that works. No, that's not too bad. It should have a bit of a redder colour in it. This is where I end up with lots and lots of brush strokes. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and increase the lightness of that and also make that slightly redder. There we go. Some, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's getting closer, but no cigar. That needs to be slightly darker. There we go. So now we've got these nice strokes just here now if i click when i double click outside of this let's have a look at how it's representing the symbol and that's working pretty well but however you can you see those that e extra extension area those are the bristle brush strokes that are causing that okay that uh, boundary to be bigger i'm going to double click on this one edit the symbol definition now to work with this let me just switch into outline mode so you can see there are the bristle brush strokes extending beyond that and all of their effects and the loveliness that they've got. So command Y or control Y to come out of that. I'm going to double click here, which takes me into, so I can actually select the individual strokes. What I'm going to do is switch to the eraser tool. So shift E to get to the eraser. I'm going to hold down alt or option to go into area mode. I'm just going to come along and clip some of those. I clipped too close. I don't want them to be completely inside the object here, but if I could just go ahead and do that, it's going to be tricky. 
Yeah, you see, it doesn't want to play ball. So another way I can work with that, okay, is to rasterize it. So if I select all of those strokes here, let's just go back out a level and back in. And if I do select, object, bristle brush strokes, I'm going to rasterize these. So edit, uh, object rather, rasterize. Just there, I'm going to change these into a transparent PNG, like so. Hit OK. Then I can go ahead and crop the image, right? Because it generates me an image. But I can go ahead and crop that image, like so. There we go. So I've got all of the goodness of those strokes, but it is an image, which, you know, if you're someone like Bert Dries, who's a vector purist, he would not accept that. He would just say, no, 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 it's got to be just pure vectors, but um, I'm much more real world <laughs> than that. There you go. It does work. Groovy bristle brush. It works great. It does. It works. Uh, Sean, it really works. There we go. So there we are. I could enhance that still. For, if I thought, you know, that's not quite dark enough, because it's created me, uh, because I've got a dynamic symbol there, and a symbol is a form of group, in my appearance panel, I could add another fill on top of that group. Okay, and then I could make that a gradient, yeah, and then change the gradient on top of it. For some reason, not working uh, there just at the moment. Something's weird, but anyway. That is something you can do. Anyway, I'm just going to undo that a couple of times so I've got the symbol uh, there. Then I'm going to need uh, a few of those down at the bottom here. So I'm going to option drag one like so. Okay, and then just go ahead and scrunch that down. Get that wood paneling effect. Option key down. And then just... There we go. So we've got those... Nice wood panelling things. You can have a look at these here. You can see how that works. I think I went much thinner there, much thinner more of uh, when I drew that one, which was a little while ago. So, you know, I just sort of make a nice how do I. So we'll try that again. Option drag one up. So this would be, of course, the speaker just here. The speaker attached to the TV. Who knew? And now that effect is even better. Great stuff. Uh, I can go select same symbol instance to select all of those symbols uh, just there. Now, I'm not sure if that is a native uh, command. That might be uh, something that's been provided by Astute Graphics. Now, I'm not sure, actually. Can't remember off the top of my head. I'm going to group that uh, now so I've got all those things together. Let's draw a few dials here. Let's start with the bigger ones. How are we doing? We're, we've got 10 minutes, so I'm going to get one of these dials drawn, I think. Let's zoom in on this. This object at the top, by the way, is a gradient stroke with a width profile for the antenna. And this bit here, okay, this dome, that's a gradient mesh on uh, an ellipse with squircular sides. All right, so in we go. Like that. Oops, a daisy. Out we come a little bit. Suddenly I've got dynamic zooming. What's going on with your illustrator? Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and create our first dial. There will be two dials. I seem to have another thing. Us, ah, the middle of the uh, symbols just there, I think that is. Possibly. Or something else, who knows. Right, so we're going to go ahead and do this dial here. Uh, let's get our reference so we can see this. Let's go for the whole thing here. If we turn off uh, the visibility of some of the other things here just for the minute. We'll just move this to the side. And we'll hide this one. Uh, so Command-2, uh, we'll lock that. Command-3, we'll hide it. I'm just going to unlock that. There you go. Hidden. Nice. So we can go ahead and work on this. This is a collection of different things here. So first of all, it's kind of dark grey on the outside, but not black. Uh, then I'm going to add a new fill. So this is going to be entirely appearance panel based just, just here. 
So command slash to duplicate that fill. I'm going to make that slightly darker, that one. Then with that selected, effects, distort and transform, transform. And then just bring the scale down. Let's have a look at how that's going to work. Somewhere like that, about 75% I think is going to work pretty well. Somewhere like that. So next one also needs to be 75. That's just great. Hit OK, done. <clears throat> now I'm going to make one more of those. So I'm going to duplicate the current object here. I am going to make that slightly lighter again. Then go to transform. And then just make this slightly smaller still. Just so I'm getting that slight edge just there. Can you see that? So good edge there. Doesn't currently have a stroke, so we're going to give it one. Okay, so stroke, and I'm going to make this super light gray, and then this is going to be distort and transform. Now, I could actually do that with Shift Command E because that was the last thing I did, right? So, effect, you can see, apply that Shift Command E, transform, but do other stuff to it. Alt Shift Command E. But now I've got that, I can go ahead and model that the way I want it to be. So, I do want it to be uh, slightly bigger. There, like so, 90% pretty well working for me just there in both places. Goody, goody. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to go to 85. You'll see why in a second. Okay. Then I'm going to make this stroke much, much bigger. So something like that is pretty good. Okay, that's fine. That's working quite well. Then I'm going to go to the stroke and I'm going to make this a dashed line. And for the dash, I'm going to make this one point and then just increase the gap or decrease the gap, get it however you want it to be. So just by modulating the gap just there, you will end up with what you want. Now, this, this, if this was going to be a small icon, that's kind of about the spacing I think you would want just there. Hit return just to commit that dialogue. Everything here can be changed. So if that's not near enough to the edge, Right, then you can go ahead and just change what you need there. So I'm going to bring that to 88 there like so. I think that's fine and that's worked really well. I do want another stroke on there. Okay, so I'm going to go duplicate the selected item. But this one, I want it to be not a dash stroke. So I'm going to turn that option off. I also don't want it to be as big as that. So I'm going to go into the sub pixel region. There, so about half a point. And then go to my transform here and then just make that so it's towards the outside edge. Just there like that. Okay, so 98%. So it's kind of hitting that edge nicely. I could also change the opacity of that, which might work nicely for that particular stroke. Just to bring that down, just to give it a slight, slight illusion of a bevel. Nice. Right, okay, we've also got though on here some things that would typically be numbers, but to avoid language in there, what we are going to do instead is we are going to select this stroke and duplicate it. So I'm just hitting the plus at the bottom here. Then we're going to do a bit of a transform. So very quickly, okay, bringing this down into this region here. So that's working at about 63% works pretty well. So let's just type 63 into the next field and hit OK. Then we're going to go and work on the stroke. So this time it's going to have zero uh, weight just for the minute. Okay. Uh, actually, no, it's not going to have zero weight. It is going to have its existing weight. So I'm just going to hit escape just there for the moment. Okay. We'll go back to that. What we are going to do though is we are going to add rounded end caps to that line. I don't think that's selected, you know, it's not. All right. So uh, stroke. Just here, let's just turn that off to make sure we're working in the right place and back on. So rounded end caps, like so. The dash is going to be zero. Yeah, and then the gap is going to be bigger. Okay, so we're just going to increase the gap just there until we get as many things as we need. I think that works pretty well. Yep, that's working pretty good just there, so that's fine. Then we need uh, a line on top of that. We're going to draw that as a separate element just here. So I'm going to get my line tool. So this would be the handle. I'm just going to hold down option. It's taking on that appearance 
uh, of the object there, which is just fine. That's great. We can fix that just really easy just by turning off the dash line. Do that. That should have a little bit of a gradient on it as well, really. Uh, it should. So we'll change that to a gradient stroke across the stroke like so. That's working nicely. We then need another stroke underneath that. So we'll go to the appearance. We'll duplicate that and the one on the bottom. OK, we'll just change this to a solid color. We'll make it black and then just increase the stroke weight there. But we won't make it black. We'll make it very, very dark gray and just increase the stroke weight. So it's just kind of adding a slight edge to that. In the dial underneath, pretty much the same deal apart from the dash stroke there, of course, didn't have the rounded caps on it. That was pretty much uh, a straightforward thing. We can bring that back into play around about there. If I needed to scale that, first of all, I'm going to make sure that scale strokes and effects is turned on. Option key down to work from the center, shift key to keep it proportional. Let's have a look at how we are doing. We have just a few minutes, so we'll go ahead and turn on the other layers. Oh, there we go. I'm just going to duplicate this uh, this thing here. I'm going to get these things and group them. Option drag that one down beneath the other one. Ah, oh, I see now why I did that. Okay, so we'll just get those two in like that. Nice. There we go. So we've got our dials. Da da da. And very quickly, very very quickly, I'm just going to show you the. Uh, the antenna just here. I'm going to draw just a straight line I'm going to increase the weight of that uh, just here. So that will give me something to work with. And let's zoom in on that so you can see how this one works. So for this one, this had a gradient on the stroke that should have that going across like so. so there was my gradient. I then switched to the width tool. So shift W to get to the width tool and then start to make some changes here, like bringing in the top here like so, maybe making that slightly wider at a point like that. Then here, bringing this out and then moving this width point along until it connects with the previous width point just there. That gives us that nice antenna shape, which is width dependent. So if it's too wide, yeah, you can just go ahead and just bring that down like so. All of the width, point, width points can be changed. You can do them numerically if you want to as well. And just to remind you, uh, this and many more things can be learned from my training, okay, on LinkedIn Learning. At the moment, there are over yeah, 376,000 people, okay, watching my Illustrator courses alone and 1.7 odd million uh, watching um, my courses as a whole, including the ones on graphic design and much, much more. OK, so that's how I did that. The rest of it, pretty straightforward. OK, with my uh, selection tool here, I just basically lent that over at an angle. Then I got hold of the uh, reflect tool and then just created a reflected copy vertically like so. OK, and there you are. That's how the antennas were drawn for that. Everything else you've seen, I hope you've enjoyed it very, very much. I've loved having you here, but for now, we are pretty much done. There we are. Lovely lots. Take care. See you. Bye-bye-bye.